Let's talk about the more controversial, like that wasn't controversial enough, the more controversial left side colon cancers. Um, and again, I want to make these patients BRAF, wild type, uh, KRAS, all RAS, wild type. Um, we have a fairly clear difference of practice mm. between the US and the EU in this space. Um, Dirk, I'm going to let you go first on sort of describing the rationale for using EGFR therapy. The way I see it, you know, we used to give EGFR therapy to everybody. Now, then it was RAS, then it was BRAF, now it's left-sided. So when you look at the total number of patients who fit, it's down to about 20% of the population, right? It's not, there's a fairly low frequency of patient who now fits this pattern. But right. in that sweet spot, in that left-sided uh, mutation right. wild type, right. what are you doing? Well, for them, if they, if they are, if we can identify them, we clearly give an anti eutrophic receptor antibody as first-line treatment coming from the better overall survival likelihood of these combined analyses as from the individual trials in these uh, patient groups and also the better progression-free survival and uh, overall response rate. So there is some consistency and um, I think the, the, the recommendation is clear. And I also agree with it. It may be about 20% of those which really do benefit from this. Interestingly, we, also, we already saw this in the very first analysis of these anti-EGFR trials, when we are comparing response rates between chemotherapy and chemotherapy plus anti-EGFR, and response rates were about 20% higher. Yeah? So therefore, it mirrors that this is this group of patients which really do benefit from an anti-EGFR. So in this patient population, your all's practice, you would not start treatment or you wouldn't start a biologic until you knew the molecular profile of the patient? Well, we stood, would start treatment. If the patient is symptomatic and needs treatment, we would give him treatment go ahead with chemo, whatever. But as we do have information that is left side primary, RAS and BRAF wild type, we would in any case. If there's nothing against, speaking against adverse events, patient clear yeah. preference or whatever, uh, all, of, all factors are important. But if this doesn't speak against, we would recommend the patient to be treated with an anti eGF receptor antibody. Uh, now in Italy, at least in 90% of cases, I will say, the big hospitals and the medium-sized hospitals, uh, we uh, have uh, the testing of ORAS and BRAF for, uh, I will say, almost all patients before we start first line. So basically, this is part of our workout for decision making, also in terms of prognosis, in terms of uh, the, the right of the patients to know what this is this is about. And what we are trying to do, and maybe we are anticipating the, the topic we'll discuss later, is also to uh, have the status of uh, microsatellite instability. Right. This is what we are trying to do. You're gonna uh, wanna know all that anyway. Yeah. yeah. And what, I, you know, Paul, Tony, what I'd like us to sort of comment on is, why aren't we? W yeah. What is the counter to this? They do have these right. trials. They are, they are hard to interpret, I think, these yeah. trials, because the, the PFS and all of those are the same, and it's really after the fact that we see the tail on the curve. We have a lot of sort of counter arguments as to why we're not doing it. Tony, why don't you go first on some of those, that why we tend to use VEGF inhibitor bevacizumab in this setting. We're simpler. Simpler. No, so it's, it's, a, it's a practical and pragmatic element. I mean, you know, when you look at the cumulative data, it is very clear that EGFR inhibitors do not benefit patients significantly or not at all on the right side. Mm. On I'm the talking left, about this sweet spot. Patient, we're we're yeah. talking about the sweet spot patients. On the left side, it's less clear uh, uh, the delta, at least from the U.S.-based studies, the deltas are not as uh, 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 significant on the left side between VEGF and EGFR inhibitors. So in many ways, in, in simplicity, frankly, uh, you look pragmatically at the cumulative uh, studies and the thought is, why should I change my standard since my standard had been for ever, since we started introducing these agents, chemo plus bevacizumab, I haven't seen that convincing data that suggests that, that on the left side I need to change my standard. On the right side, it became clearer. Now, that does not say that EGFR inhibitors do not have a role in the first line. Now, the, 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 the one thing I tell you we implemented in our practice, if we actually moved, and I've done that for, for quite a while, but for most of our practice, we've moved these EGFR inhibitors now to the second line mm. rather than to wait. We'll go through a couple of uh, VEGF 
uh, lines in. Even though there's really no data in that window. There's no OS data in second line. There's sure. refractory in first but, line. But just on that left side. Yeah. In that just, patient, in the in sweet that, spot In that patient. sweet spot patient, we've moved it closer to the first line. But, you know, the, the evidence, at least in, in my mind, from the cumulative studies, is not that compelling. Yeah, so I'd like to, you know, Paul, I want to hear what you have to say on this. So. Sure, just I'll make a few comments very quickly. I mean, one is that the, you know, the 80405 did not sort of confirm the FIRE 3 data in the way that uh, really probably would have changed practice if, if it had it aligned. And, and I would one. like to express yeah, here a disappointment that 80405, we, were, we wanted it to be positive in some level because this was molecularly targeted therapy, sure, right gene, right patient. almost 40 months of survival. I mean, it's right, these, these extraordinary. These guys are having a stroke, but we're going to let them Absolutely. talk in a minute. So. Well, and this, the, this, the issue, I, and I'm, I, I would say deeply personally conflicted about this because I have not converted to giving anti-EGFR therapy in the first line, even in this kind of 20% patient population right. who has a wild type tumor on the left side. Another reason is that you're, you're going to be on first line therapy for a long time. Um, and you're also going to get the most mileage from an overall survival perspective from first line therapy. Patients are going to be on it on average 10 or 11 months. Some of our patients are on first line therapy, as you know well, for two, Four two years. and a half years. Mm -hmm. And so to be, the thought of being on EGFR therapy with a rash for that long, even though the rash tends to get better with long-term therapy. I did want to talk about the toxicity management that you guys need to do, because one of my counters is, particularly in the city I live in, where, where looks matter, they still let me in anyway, but um, <laughs> you know, that, that rash and all that stuff, um, you know, having a brand new diagnosis, and now I'm going to give you a visible toxicity, right. is, an, is and it's one more thing for the practice to have mm -hmm. to do. It's one more education step. Uh, that you well, have and to as you know, psychologically, it, uh, this is only partially about vanity. It's mostly yeah. about announcing that you have cancer, yeah. right? You have a lot of explaining to do once you have a rash. Once you show up at work Absolutely. with this new rash. And then uh, another argument I've heard, and I'd love to hear a sort of discussion on this, is that we, U.S., tend to use more second-line biologics. But when you look at the studies, it does fall off more. Yeah. But is that, is that a valid oh, argument, no. you no, think? No, that's no. not. So okay. let, 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 let me echo, let, let me reply. Um, also, the U.S. disappointment about the 8045 trial. Mm -hmm. We have now undertaken the endeavor to combine these trials, mm -hmm. to have the analysis for first line for the benefit of this left-sided wild type. And the hazards ratio of all of the data together is 0.78 for overall survival and 0.75 for progression-free survival. So the majority of the data, including more than 2,000 patients, for me, clearly shows the benefit of this. Well, the toxicity I mean, concern is there, I agree. Um, however, um, I'm saying this uh, also for me as a, one who was working on the continuation of treatment in a maintenance trial and for me who was working on the TML trial on this strategy, really adhering to the long-term benefit of bevacizumab. But just keep patients on treatment is not a benefit per se. Mm -hmm. yeah? And keeping patients on treatment for a long time without extra benefit yeah, if it doesn't add, it doesn't add. And if these few months of anti-EGFR provide these results, that's likely so the, the better treatment. You know, from a, from a practice.